Good Monday afternoon. I'm Dr. Martha Buchanan, Senior Director and Public Health Officer here at the Knox County Health Department. Our moment of gratitude today is dedicated to um, our KCHD's custodial staff who has worked diligently since the pandemic began, not only to keep our buildings clean, but also sanitize our testing locations to keep our staff and the community safe. We are incredibly grateful for their very hard work. Today, our real world example of how to put the five core actions into play is watching your kids play sports. We know some sports have already started back. First, we acknowledge everyone, to, we acknowledge, sorry, not acknowledge, we encourage everyone to make the best decisions for their family as it relates to extracurricular activities, whether they play or don't play. If your kids are participating, there are important ways you can implement the five core actions while you watch your kids play. We know it can be exciting to cheer them on in the company of other parents. But make sure you aren't huddled closely together. Keep at least six feet of distance between you uh, and the other parents. If you should, if you set your lawn chair up, keep it six feet away from the other lawn chairs. Um, and you'll still be able to talk to the other parents and cheer your children on uh, as they play while not putting yourself or others at risk. If you're in a confined space and six feet of distance is impossible, make sure everyone is wearing a mask. Again, allowing you to watch and keep each other safe. If you or your child aren't feeling well, sit this game out. It's better to miss a game or two than potentially spread an illness to other members of the team. These are simple things that will truly make a difference in reducing the spread of this virus in our community. As a reminder, the Board of Health meets Wednesday, August 12th via Zoom at 5 p.m. The public may watch the meeting live on Knox County's YouTube channel or the Knox County website. It may also be viewed on community television. As a reminder, we are not testing today but we'll continue our COVID-19 testing Wednesday and Friday of this week from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Jacob Building in Chihuahua Park. Today, school mania will be taking place in a drive through format in the parking lot of the Jacob Building. Gates will open at 2 p.m. and the event will take place from 3 to 6 p.m. For a quick note of housekeeping, we made a change on one of our data, data pages. We are now utilizing a specimen collection data chart instead of the epi chart, epi curve chart we previously had on the website. We did this for a few reasons. First, this mirrors what the Tennessee Department of Health is doing. Also, we have specimen collection dates for all of our confirmed cases. The epi curve was based on reported symptom onset date or specimen collection date if the person was asymptomatic. So there's some variability there. By using specimen collection, data, um, sorry, when we use in specimen collection date, we'll have cleaner, more reliable, or more consistent data showing a very similar curve to what we were showing previously. Now, you'll just notice a dip on the weekends since test, testing tends to drop off on the weekend. Now we'll move into the local situation. We have 85 new confirmed cases as from yesterday's report, since yesterday's report giving us 4,784 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Knox County since March. Additionally, we have 163 probable cases. 2,611 of our cases have recovered, giving us 2,290 active cases. 222 individuals have been hospitalized at some point in their illness. 27 Knox County residents are currently hospitalized. We are saddened to report one additional death related to COVID-19, bringing our total to 46. Our thoughts and prayers are, of course, with those who've lost loved ones. We do want to take a minute to correct something. Last, the, something. last week, we reported out a deceased 29-year-old male. There was a reporting error, and the individual was actually 55. The data has been corrected and reflected in today's number. Additionally, we have learned of a misreporting error on Friday, leading to the low number of currently hospitalized individuals in Knox County. The numbers we've reported out today are what we have received from the hospitals this morning. That said, we are still seeing a lower number in, of hospitalizations that we have recent, than we have recently seen, and that's very encouraging. Now we'd like to move to a topic we said we discussed today, and that's clusters. First, the cluster is defined 
as two or more people who have a common exposure outside their household. It's important to note that the majority of cases in Knox County are, not from, are from community spread and not clusters. Additionally, we are seeing clusters all throughout our community, not just pinpointed in one industry or type of gathering. Since March, we've identified, educated, and when appropriate, tested clusters all throughout our community. For each cluster, the numbers of confirmed cases range anywhere from two to 40 or more people. To illustrate this further, we're pulling up a graph from the Tennessee Department of Health this shows a snap snapshot of Knox County clusters till today's date. This graph tracks clusters in assisted living facilities, restaurants, construction, industrial settings, and, or um, nursing homes, healthcare facilities, or other facilities, as well as community clusters. Per Tennessee Department of Health, examples of community clusters include those in educational or religious slash spiritual settings, Examples of other facilities include daycares and mental health facilities. From this data, you can see the most frequent reported cluster setting is community. Activities such as barbecues or dinner parties are clusters that are also identified and classified under community. Back in the early stages of the pandemic, we didn't see very many clusters. Since mid-June, those numbers have increased. The big takeaway here is that clusters are occurring in a variety of places, and they do not make up the majority of our cases community spread does. Your risk of getting COVID-19 is present all across the community. The best defense against the virus are the five core actions. If you practice these five core actions consistently, you will lessen the risk of getting or spreading the virus. Now I'll open up for questions. All right, go ahead and submit your questions into the chat feature. First question we have is from Megan with WVLT. Any tips for parents who want to teach their kids to practice the five core actions as they return to the classroom? Um, well, that's a great question. Um, you know, parents are teach their children lots of things about washing their hands and the, all those different things that we want them to do. Um, one suggestion is get them used to wearing a mask so they get are comfortable in it because they'll they'll be wearing it through throughout the school day, and so getting them used to wearing that mask. For a while uh, will be helpful um, for, for the for the children and, and the school staff as well. Um, you know, talking to them about hand washing and and, and being um, careful. Um, you know, the best best advice also is to bring it down to the child's level, make sure they're understanding. Um, the American Academy of Pediatrics probably has some guidance on that. I haven't looked at it, but they frequently have guidance for parents, so that might be a resource parents could use. A quick note for those watching on Facebook Live, we're aware that there could be a little bit of an echo, so our team is looking into that and we apologize for that. Um, from Paul with WBIR, UT students are returning to campus this week. Do UT students who test positive get counted in the Knox County numbers or in their home states slash counties? Nope, they're living here if they get counted in Knox County. From Jeff with WATE, can you provide us with the age, gender details on the weekend deaths and today's death? Sure, today's death was a 51-year-old male. Deaths from Saturday, 61-year-old male and a 43-year-old female. And the death from Sunday was a 67-year-old male. From Vincent with a Sentinel, as per the updates over the weekend in the one to 10 age group, there were 294 cases within one to 10-year-olds. This dropped pretty substantially today to 294. Um, not sure if that's the right number there, if you want to correct that. Um, but his question was, um, they were also pretty low before on Friday. Is this due to a similar data reporting error that caused the artificially low number of hospitalizations? Um, that's a great question, and we just have to look into it further. Um, I don't have that data right in front of me or memorized. Okay. And he clarified 228, so we'll look into that, Vincent. Um, he's also asked, will you share an image of that graph with us? As a sure. Attachment? Yep, we will. Any other questions, please go ahead and submit them now. All right, not seeing any other questions come in. Uh, so thank you all for joining us and we will see you again on Wednesday of this week and we will follow up with sending out that email attachment to you this afternoon. Have a good rest of your day.